Hi, I am Mr. Kumar, Global Technical and Market Support Manager at Trilobog Marine Systems. Thank you for watching this webinar, in which we will be discussing some new developments in the marine fender industry, specifically around the performance of rubber fenders. We will be examining the manufacturing process of rubber fenders, emphasizing on mixing process, and we will see how the mixing process affects fender performance characteristics. We will also detail how specifiers can ensure that suppliers are utilizing a manufacturing process that ensures a high quality, high performance fender, which will maintain specified properties over a long and often demanding service life. Trilobog has done a lot of work to differentiate high quality fenders from their low cost alternatives by examining the quality of rubber formulation. 70 to 80 percent of a typical rubber fender's formulation consists of raw rubbers and carbon black, while the remaining 20 to 30 percent consists of 10 to 15 other small ingredients. Raw rubbers could be natural or synthetic. A fender cannot be produced directly from raw rubbers. Raw rubbers, carbon black and other ingredients need to be converted to a rubber compound via a mixing process. Rubber compounds are then converted to a fender by molding, extrusion or wrapping process. In 2013, we introduced new specifications for chemical composition of rubber compounds. We also introduced thermogravimetric analysis or TGA testing as a way to check formulation quality. The new specifications and test methods have been well received by the consultants and high quality manufacturers alike. Let's review what these specifications and test methods are capable of. The TGA test enables specifiers to ensure that a superior rubber formulation has been selected one that contains little or no recycled rubber. It also allows specifiers to guarantee that only reinforcing fillers such as carbon black, which imparts most of the mechanical properties of rubber compounds, have been used in the formulation. What the TGA test fails to do is guarantee the superiority of the rubber compound. It just ensures high quality formulation. It neither ensures the final performance of the fenders nor the consistency of final batches. This is because the compound quality, its consistency and the fender performance are associated with a superior and consistent mixing process. The mixing process is responsible for taking a high quality formulation and ensuring the ingredients are mixed in a way that produces a high quality compound. Let's quickly recap the manufacturing process of a superior rubber fender. The manufacturing process starts with a superior formulation which we can evaluate using a TGA test to establish the ingredients used. Once you have a technically qualified formulation, you need to have a superior mixing process to ensure a superior rubber compound. A superior compound, once it has undergone the production and curing process, will generate a superior rubber fender. A superior fender could be defined as one which absorbs the right amount of energy for its application. For example, if a specification requires a 500 kNm energy absorption capacity, the fender should absorb the required amount of energy whilst exerting only up to the maximum allowable reaction force. We consider a fender to be inferior quality if it fails to absorb the specified energy. It could even create a risk to the port structure. However, just having a superior formulation is not enough to guarantee a superior fender. That's down to the mixing process. Mixing raw rubbers with other ingredients is a two-stage process. In the first stage, all ingredients except sulfur and accelerators are mixed, forming a rubber batch called the master batch. Next, sulfur and accelerators are added, converting the master batch into a final batch. Let's look at the typical fender formulation as an example. Note that suppliers would have a number of formulations available to meet various fenders' energy absorption requirements. Here you can see that 57% of the formulation consists of raw rubbers and 32% is carbon black. Thorough mixing of these two ingredients is absolutely crucial as it makes up to 90% of the total formulation. Mixing should be undertaken using a machine called an internal mixer, which is shown here. The internal mixer is the only piece of machinery that can mix ingredients well enough to ensure a high performance compound from a quality formulation. There are other machinery options available such as the kneader and two roll mills but only the internal mixer can guarantee the necessary quality of the mix. For more information on the differences between the machines and their impact on the mixing process, you can download our recent white paper which gives detailed background to this issue. But how do we define mixing quality? With rubber and carbon black, 
comprising the vast majority of the superior formulation mixing quality is evaluated based on the dispersion of carbon black within the rubber matrix carbon black consists of very small nanoparticles which fuse together to form aggregates these aggregates fuse to form agglomerates which are finally converted to granules for easy transportation to manufacturers the main objective of mixing is to break the carbon black down as much as possible and introduce it to the raw rubber matrix it takes an advanced mixer to break carbon black down to aggregate level the bare minimum to ensure intimate dispersion within the rubber matrix the internal mixer is the only machine capable of this others cannot break down the carbon black to the same extent breaking down the carbon black granules effectively needs proper force and control over the mixing parameters making the machinery used of paramount importance the breakdown of carbon black and its dispersion into the rubber matrix happens over a number of stages firstly the carbon black granules are covered by the rubber chain this stage is called incorporation as the mixing process continues the granules break down into aggregates again they are covered by the rubber chain in a step called distribution finally you will find the aggregates have separated and are covered by the rubber's molecular chains this final stage is called dispersion to achieve proper dispersion you need to generate maximum force in order to create efficient shearing and tearing between the carbon black and raw rubbers the process needs to be as fast as possible to prevent excessive breakdown of rubber chains which has negative impacts on the physical properties of rubber compounds let's examine the exact impact that machinery has on the final mix figure a and b show carbon black dispersion as a result of using an internal mixer the third figure depicts an outcome you can expect using a kneader the carbon black is not fully distributed and there are still unbroken carbon black spots visible the rubber chains themselves have also broken down because the mixing process takes longer and the temperature in the mixing chamber is poorly controlled if the rubber chain breaks physical properties degrade which impacts the fatigue life and overall performance of the fender you can start to see just how critical it is to use the right equipment so how do you measure carbon black dispersion how do you find out if it's been sufficiently broken down and uniformly distributed there is a well established astm procedure available which will allow specifiers to do this by obtaining a small sample of the finished product you can use a machine called the disper grader to rate the carbon black dispersion it will provide a rating in percentage giving users an idea of the homogeneity of the final mix just to clarify the sample collection process doesn't destroy or affect the performance of a fender but why is high carbon black dispersion so important before answering that we need to learn about compound modulus and hardness usually fender performance is associated with the hardness of the fender the current perception is that the harder a fender is the higher the reaction force will be but high hardness can be achieved using a high percentage of recycled rubber hardness can go up without physical properties improving modulus is the only accurate measure of fender performance and fatigue life both are dependent on modulus keeping all other factors constant one of the factors that heavily affect modulus is carbon black dispersion if carbon black dispersion varies the modulus value will follow if modulus varies performance varies and longevity suffers using high quantities of recycled rubber will not achieve a high modulus value so unlike hardness performance cannot be falsified modulus is the force in megapascals or mpa required to produce a certain amount of elongation of a rubber sample for example taking a 1 inch dumbbell sample the force required to stretch it to 2 inches is the 200% modulus 3 times is the 300% modulus test undertaken by trelobog have proved that hardness and modulus do not correlate and hardness is an inaccurate indicator of fender performance let's explore the details here we have taken a high quality formulation using no recycled rubber and an inferior formulation which uses high quantities of recycled rubber you can see the hardness values of the two are quite close if you don't check the modulus value you may think 
fenders produced from these formulations have similar energy absorption capacities. But when you evaluate the modulus values, you can see the fenders produced using an inferior formulation with high quantities of recycled rubber have an energy absorption capacity that is almost half of the fenders produced using superior formula. This proves that hardness doesn't reliably equal performance. Next, we will correlate the carbon black dispersion to the modulus. You can see here, we have taken one formulation and mixed it using three different mixtures, two internal mixtures and one kneader. You can clearly see the difference in dispersion levels. The superior quality mixer produced a dispersion level of 80%, whereas an inferior mixer produced a dispersion level of mere 54% for the same compound. It is clear from the data that the higher the dispersion, the higher the modulus value for the same formulation. Evidently, measurement of hardness may provide incorrect information. Modulus is a much more robust and reliable measure of performance. Let's move into the relationship between fatigue life and mixer type. You can see here the fatigue life of two compounds that have been mixed using two different mixers. The fatigue life is measured in kilocycles. Let's start with the superior formulation. The same formulation using natural rubber and carbon black when mixed in the kneader versus the internal mixer shows a drastic difference in fatigue life. Fatigue life equates to the longevity of the fender. By using the internal mixer rather than the kneader, the fatigue life is almost doubled. Trellobog recommends applying new test methods from specification through the final product delivery to allow specifiers to substantiate quality throughout the supply chain. Let's take an example to highlight how this would work in practice. Let's say a customer has ordered 50 pieces of SCN 2000 fenders. Their first question should be, how do I know I have the right fender with the right energy absorption capacity? To seek answers, the customer needs to ensure a superior formulation and that the right modulus value has been selected. They can evaluate this using the TGA test to determine the formulation and by evaluating the modulus value of the compound. Then, they should ensure that all fenders have the same performance without variation. To establish this, they need to ensure the homogeneity of the mix. They can do this by testing the carbon black dispersion of the final compound using the ASTM method. Lastly, they will want to ascertain the fatigue life and longevity of their fender. Again, evaluating carbon black dispersion will allow them to do this. All these factors should be built into a robust specification, something that's unfortunately lacking in the fender industry. Harness is the current industry practice to roughly estimate the energy absorption of a rubber fender. The market perception is that a softer fender has lower energy absorption and a harder fender has higher energy absorption. However, it is easy to falsify hardness by using recycled rubber or non-reinforcing white fillers such as calcium carbonate. Measurement of carbon black dispersion within the rubber matrix will lead the industry to more robust specifications for rubber quality, from stipulation to substantiation by determining the modulus of the rubber fenders. There is a direct correlation between dispersion and modulus. Therefore, between dispersion and fender performance. Manufacturers of fenders need to offer different compounds with different modulus values to ensure they can provide solutions that suit every specification. Thank you for listening.